During our time in the cult, the leaders decided I should move in with them. They had five teenage girls living there at the time. I was one of them. One evening, I was doing my homework on the kitchen table with the same friend who saw that flying black creature with me. Suddenly, out of nowhere, my back started stinging, and I mean really stinging. I was irritated by it and was trying to reach around and feel what was going on. Finally, after a minute or so, I asked my friend to have a look as it was really bugging me. I roll up my shirt and she stares at my back in confusion. I ask her what she sees and she tells me I have three long scratches down my back. They look like cat scratches, but much too big to be a cat scratch. They also didn't have a cat anyway. She seemed quite freaked out by it, so I went to the bathroom to view it myself. They're pretty much centered down my back. No way I can reach that. I just figured it had happened somehow earlier and I was only feeling it then for some reason. Then this happened again, a couple months later. I was playing a computer game in the room me and two other girls shared when I felt that stinging slash burning sensation again, exactly like before. Again, I tried to reach around and feel what was going on. I go to the bathroom and lift my shirt. I see three scratch marks, very similar to the ones before, but not quite as long and a little off to the side this time. I was a little worried, but I told myself it must be to do with the clothing I'm wearing. I put it out of my mind and never thought about it until years later, when I heard about this phenomena happening to many others. The next one happened before I moved out. My sister and I were in her room in the basement. It was late morning. Next to her room is the utility room, and then the stairs going up. Her bedroom door was closed. We were just chatting and hanging out in a room. We were about to go upstairs when out of nowhere we heard this growl or roar coming from the utility room area. It wasn't like any growl I can explain. It wasn't like a dog growl or a big cat's growl. If I had to describe it though, it had that deep or low sound of a large cat like a lion or tiger. And it had a similar volume to a large cat as well, but maybe closer to a bear as well. It's hard to explain. When I first heard it, I was so confused and immediately frightened. My mind was racing, wondering how on earth I was hearing what sounded like a wild animal in the house. We didn't have a dog either, by the way. Then my mind went, must be someone walking a large, aggressive dog outside, even though it didn't sound like a dog. And the sound is carrying through the walls kind of weird. I was just trying to make sense of it. Something primal inside kicked off, I think, because I became filled with dread. The growling got louder and it sounded like it was making its way towards her door. I look to my sister with panic and see that she's frozen on the spot. Her face was filled with fear and also confusion. I remember actually wanting to escape out of her bedroom window at that point. My sister told me to stop and be quiet, but I couldn't. The growling was getting louder and closer and seemed to be right outside the door now. I couldn't just do nothing. So I started screaming for my mum just calling out to her over and over. The growling immediately stopped when I did that. I kept screaming for a minute or so, then I stop and we listen. There's no growling anymore, it's totally silent. My heart is pounding. I tell my sister we have to run out. She tries to stop me, but I open the door anyway. I quickly look around and we don't see anything. So I race upstairs with my sister right behind me. We ran to my mom and told her. Another incident that happened a time, again, when I was in my sister's room. I had decided to sleep in her room that night. We had just got into bed and were talking. Almost as soon as our conversation ended, when the room was totally silent, a voice coming from the end of the bed broke that silent. It was a loud whisper, and it said my name as clear as day. Just my name, nothing else. I couldn't tell if the voice was male or female. It was just a very loud whisper. I immediately grabbed my sister and said her name. I was totally freaked out. She responded right away and said, I heard it. I was so terrified. I clung to her, trying to process what we heard and what could be the possible cause. She said, we mustn't give it any attention. I couldn't stay there though, so I got up to get a glass of water and to calm down. I slept on the couch that night. I was absolutely terrified. Thank you.
I must have been eight and my sister would have been around six. My mum would take us to our grandpa's house very often. Her mother, my grandma, passed away when my mum was only nine or ten years old in that house. There was this one time. I remember sitting in the living room with my mum, sister, brother and grandpa. My mum and grandpa were chatting while us kids were playing. I had to go to the bathroom really badly, but for some reason was afraid to go alone. I asked my mum to take me, but since she was talking to my grandpa, she told me to, to ask my sister. My sister didn't want to go with me, even though I begged and begged. I finally just decided to go alone. The bathroom was a decent size. You walked in and you'd pass a huge sink countertop with a mirror, covering the wall, and then the toilet and tub would be at the end. I remember walking in. I can't remember if I closed the door or not, but I probably did. As I walked in, I gave a side-eyed glance to the wide mirror, and I saw my sister walking behind me, smiling. I turned around to yell at her for making me beg so much, and saying no, just to come after all. But when I turned around, she wasn't there. The bathroom was empty. It was so long ago and I was so little, but I think I even remembered hearing her voice. I couldn't tell you for the life of me what she might have said, though. I ran back to the living room to tell my mum what had happened, and ask my sister if she had followed me after all. My sister swears, even to this day, when I bring it up, that she never followed me into that bathroom. My grandpa doesn't live there anymore, and I don't know if my mum ever believed me, although she does believe in the paranormal. I don't think my sister did follow me, but if she didn't, what did I see? My cousin Molly Bish went missing in 2000, a few months before I was born. They found her body three years later. Obviously, it took a big toll on my family. My mum was a teenager who'd just given birth, and her anxiety basically tripled. When I was a kid, me and my mum lived with my grandmother and aunts, and all of them tell stories about how, when I was a little toddler, I would sit in front of open closets and talk to someone that wasn't there. This apparently happened like every day. Obviously, there was nobody actually in the closet and it gave my family the creeps. Imagine a little kid looking into a dark closet in the middle of the night, just laughing and babbling, reaching towards the darkness. My grandma was buds with a medium at the time and they told her that Molly's spirit was coming to visit me. Of course, this all happened when I was a little kid, so I don't remember much of it, but I do remember one encounter I had it also happened to be the last encounter. I was around six or seven, laying in bed sleeping when I felt something wake me up. It wasn't a noise or touch or anything like that, more of an overwhelming wave of fear and a feeling of, you need to wake up now. I woke up and looked into my open closet, which was right next to the bed, and I saw a person standing there. I don't remember exactly what they looked like, just that they were very, very pale. But what I do remember was that they looked furious and I was terrified. I started screaming bloody murder and my family all came running in to check on me because they thought someone was attacking me. I was screaming and crying so hard that I was turning purple and my mom was worried I would suffocate myself. They brought me into the living room and once they finally calmed me down enough to talk, I told them I saw somebody standing in my closet. My grandma went back to my room to go check and didn't find anybody, but they all believed that I had seen something because my reaction was so strong. My grandma ended up calling the cops to check out the house and make sure there wasn't an intruder, as we had had some invasions before. The cops didn't find anything and just choked it up to me mistaking clothes in the dark for a person. And hell, maybe that's what it was. I'm 21 now and I don't think I believe in ghosts but that doesn't change the fact that this experience messed me up so bad that I slept with the lights on until I was 13 and still, to this day, 100% refuse to sleep with the closet door open. This happened back in 2010. I was in my last year in college at Arkansas Tech in Russellville, Arkansas, I was staying off campus in an apartment complex, not too far away, but hidden in some mountains about 15 minutes away from the university and another 15 minutes away from the Dover lights of Dover. 
I shared a two bedroom apartment with a friend and we'd always have things happening during the night. Dishes moving, kids talking and laughing who were not there. It became so much for my roommate that he would spend his time staying with his family who lived nearby rather than staying in the apartment. I, unfortunately, had family six hours away in Dallas, Texas and couldn't stay anywhere other than the apartment. My roommate would be gone and this would have been when Modern Warfare 3 and Black Ops was the go-to franchises. So I'd be playing well into the night and the occasional silverware sliding on dishes in the sink noise would occur. We had no cats or dogs, so when it would happen, we would immediately know what was happening. This went on through the entirety of our lease. One night, it was particularly hot and humid, and our AC unit gave out. My roommate went with his family, and I asked my girlfriend at the time if I could stay at her home in Paris, Arkansas, about an hour away. She agreed, and I spent the night. A storm came that night, and as I was asleep, I had a dream about a niece of mine who had passed away two years prior. When I was back home in Dallas, she would get her blanket and ask to sleep on a futon I had next to my room. I felt her presence as I was sleeping, as if she was right next to me on my girlfriend's bed. All of a sudden, I woke up and through the lightning from the windows, you can see a small figure jump off of the bed and run out of the door. The entity had so much movement that my girlfriend woke up from the feeling and saw the entity run out of the door and into the hallway. We sat up for what seemed like hours, shocked and in awe, until we started seeing daylight from the windows and we went back to sleep. We didn't last long together after that and the occurrences at my apartment continued until I graduated and moved back home. Okay, so a little backstory. My house was built in the 60s or 70s by my great grandparents. As far as I know, they never saw anything strange and it wouldn't really make sense for them to have because it was a new house. And I'm assuming the land was free of any sort of spooky things. Both of my grandparents died in the house. They weren't murdered or anything. They just didn't want to go to a nursing facility. They had hospital beds in the den and that's where they died. The hot spots of my house are the den the living room, the hall bathroom, and my room. My best friend was staying one night, and we slept in the living room, which faces the highway. And the next morning, he told me about a man standing at the window with a cowboy hat on. He said he tried to wake me, but I didn't react. I'm assuming the man was my great-grandfather, who didn't wear cowboy hats as far as I know, but he was a state trooper, and they wear hats resembling a cowboy's here. The second sighting comes from my mom, and she's a bit sceptical, so I believe her 100%. She was taking a bath, and she looked up to see my great-grandmother sitting on a closed toilet, smiling at her. I asked my mom if she was scared, but she said she was just calm and it was strange, because she just faded away like she was never there. So those are relatively harmless, just simple sightings, nothing of concern. My girlfriend has seen something twice while in my house, and it's not a calm feeling for her. She saw a face in the reflection, which could have just been a light, nothing bad. But the last night she was here, I was off to get food and she walked out of my room to take a shower. And she saw something move quickly from the living room to the den. The absolute worst experiences happen in my room. I used to be able to hear breathing in my room. It would match mine, but I started to catch it and get it out of rhythm. And I know it wasn't my parents, because it was way too loud and not muffled. But I just blew it off, and I don't hear it anymore. One of the worst experiences is a recurring one. A sense of pure dread. Where I think I can move, but I feel like I'm not supposed to. And I can't convince myself to move, and last night was awful. I was on the phone with my girlfriend, and this was the first time I've spoken while it was there. We were having a normal conversation, and I hear my poster on my door move and it was immediate dread. I told her I heard the poster move and she asked if my fan was on. It was, but it was on low and that never bothers the poster. And it set in. The inability to move freely and the sense of dread. My eyes uncontrollably started watering as a wave of emotions washed over me. I told her it's in here and how I've had experiences with it before. And she told me to just look, but I told her that I don't think I'm supposed to. 
This went on for a while and for the first time I was able to see it, but not really. I told her it's really scary and she asked if I could see it, but I told her I couldn't see it. But I know what it looks like and it's like nothing I've seen before. I can hardly describe it. I felt as though it got closer and a huge wave of shivers crossed my body. I was hot and cold at the same time and then it was gone. Some slight residual fear, but I was able to confidently move. I don't know what it could be. It could just be my brain playing tricks on me, but I really don't think it is. The situation I'm describing occurs only rarely, like every two or three months. It always happens in the morning between 6 or 7 a.m. Every two weeks, my fiance has to get up at 5 a.m. for work and leaves at 5.30, so we can get to work at 6. These weeks, I start work at 8.30 and get up around 7.15. The thing that sometimes happens is that I hear him coming up the stairs with keys jingling in his hand, ready to open the apartment door, which is right next to our bedroom door, hence why I can hear it. Also, I have very good hearing if there isn't any background noise. I usually think that he must have left something important at home, and that's why he came back. But as soon as the door opens, I get a very bad feeling. He does his usual things like taking off his shoes, putting his bag in the living room, doing these things as quietly as possible so as not to wake me up. I always feel a weird tingling on my back when he enters the bedroom. He carefully gets into bed after taking off his clothes and gets under the blanket. At this point, I usually am horrified as he gently puts his arms around me and hugs me not too tightly. I always act as if I wasn't awake and do not even dare to move. I love when he strokes me, mostly on my back, and he knows exactly just how much I love it and starts doing just that. At this point, I gather my confidence to check the time on my phone, which is always next to me on the bed. I put my phone down and lay there for a few more minutes. I'm terrified because I know that I'm not asleep, but I'm also sure that anything that is behind me isn't my fiance. After those few minutes, I just can't wait any longer and either turn around or move my hand in a way that I would surely hit him without turning to look at him. As soon as I do this, the mattress on his side gets higher as if he just lifted up his weight. There's just air. Nobody is lying there next to me. I'm alone. I check my phone and sure as anything, only a few minutes have gone by. I don't know what it is, but it creeps me out. I'm sure that I'm not asleep and that I'm not just dreaming the whole thing, but I have no idea what this could be. I don't feel like it wants to hurt me. As I said, it just lays there, hugs me and then gets a bit back so it can stroke my back. Sometimes I get a kiss on my neck, but not always. All of these are things that I like. I should just enjoy it, but it still creeps me out. It was a typical spring afternoon about five years ago. Laying on my couch in my room, the room was a master, so it was very spacious. I was very relaxed and comfortable, and I closed my eyes for a moment. Then I opened them, and I felt paralyzed. I could only move my eyes. My bed, TV, curtains, laundry, everything was exactly where it usually was. Nothing was out of place or unusual, except I couldn't move. And my vision was black and grey as if I was colourblind. I thought there was no way this was a dream. Is this what you call astral travelling? Did I do it? Is this what you call vivid dreaming? What's going on? As I asked myself these questions, my bathroom door next to me began to creak open. It was pitch black inside, and out of it came a jagged shadow figure that moved in a quick, bizarre way. The shadow figure moved closer and closer to me as I lay there helpless. I thought there was no way I would let this thing hurt me. Then, I felt a strong urge to sit up, so I fought the paralysis with determination to sit up. I began sitting up, but something wasn't right. I looked at my arms, torso, and to my surprise, my body was still lying on the couch. I had an out-of-body experience. The out-of-body experience was so weird and authentic. 
My spirit self looked like a NASA picture of space dust, and it was a gold colour. I felt like pure energy. I looked at the shadow figure, and I said the first thing that came to my mind. Fuck you. After I said this out loud, the shadow figure went in reverse back to the dark, and I became sucked back into my body, instantly waking up. I quickly looked around, and everything was as it was in my dream. The experience is an accurate recollection. The story is true. I've never told anyone except a handful of people. I remember it to this day in detail and honestly think it was not a dream. It was a typical day. And I was laying on my couch with nothing specific in mind. Next thing I know, I woke up in a dream. Before this happened, about a week ago, I was on a supernatural kick with my cousin. We were both very intrigued by the unknown and I wanted to learn more about astral travel. I've always had cases of sleep paralysis ever since I was a child, and read an article saying it might be the beginning of astral travelling or something. After this experience in my room, I've never had sleep paralysis again, and I've never really tried to astral travel. Did I break through that reality and afterlife barrier? Was I in a realm to be explored? When I was a kid, I used to have very strange flashbacks and imageful thoughts that I can't explain to this day. They all felt like they were from the era of the 80s. It was certain external trigger factors that caused these flashbacks. For example, weather, mostly rainy and dark, certain smells, music, or certain places that suddenly seemed strangely familiar to me, even though I've never been there before. What I see are single images. For example, How I sit in an office, or one of the typical computers of the 80s. How I rush through rainy streets in the evening, presumably after a long day at work. Or how I work at home on a computer-like typewriter. It was especially bad when I first heard a specific pop song from 1987. It sent shivers down my spine because I had another flashback. A very real one while I was lying in a hospital. I'm in my 20s now, and these memories are significantly less vivid than what they used to be. But what I still experience is a kind of nostalgia that's triggered by certain music genres or movies, but doesn't bring up particular images. I read about anemia, a phenomenon of nostalgia which is currently described as particularly strong by millennials. Trends like dark academia, or the sudden popularity of 80s city pop, Polaroid, etc., are said to be related to this. I believe that I have a vivid imagination, and I'm a very thoughtful person. But to this day, I still wonder how sometimes out of nowhere these images arise, and where this feeling comes from that I cannot put into words. Assuming that one believes in reincarnation, would it then be possible to assume that this diffuse feeling described as anemia is somehow related to it? I was around seven or eight when this happened. Usually after school, my mom would come pick me and my sister up and bring us back to her office. She'd finish up her work while we played with literally anything we could find, pencilers, staplers, you name it. We touched and played with it. I don't exactly remember how it happened, but we did it very often. If I recall correctly, it first started when my sister asked if I wanted to try something scary. She then picked up the telephone our mom rarely used and started calling a random number and would then pass the phone to me. On the other line, I would hear this unsettling raspy voice that sounded like an old man was dying and crying out in agony. However, what was weird is that I don't remember myself being spooked by it. Instead, I had a lot of fun with my sister and we'd both laugh at how it sounded. Being a kid, I tried to communicate with it by asking if it was okay or what its name was. With every question, there'd be a low, rumbly response. It was as if he was talking back to us. Fast forward a few weeks, my sister stays back at school for extra activities, so it would just be me and occasionally my cousin. Out of boredom, I'd dial the number, but what's weird is I record clearly that I didn't have an exact number to dial. All I had to do was just press random numbers on the telephone, and it'll ring up the thing. 
This happened very frequently for all the times I was at my mom's office and even got my cousin to experience it. That's about it. Years went by and I eventually forgot about it until a few years back. And since then, I've just been thinking about exactly what the fuck happened and how it happened. I've tried asking my cousin who I'm no longer close to as well as my sister, but they've both denied that such an event ever happened and thought I was out of my mind. I tell it to many people as well that get the same response, but deep down, I knew this shit happened. The closure I need is to find out how it happened. Was it my sister? Was it the phone? Was it the office? I was 22 years old when it happened. I can still remember the dream vividly. I was on a battlefield with a sword in one hand and holding a shield in my left hand. I was part of some army surrounded by soldiers like me and we all started charging forward when we heard the buzzing of a horn of some sort. After taking a few steps, I look up and see a rain of arrows falling down at us. I raise my shield. I was too late. I felt a horrible sting on my chest and I fell down on my back. Everything started to go dim. I could still feel the arrow piercing me more as it swung back and forth. So I held the arrow stick and broke it. Piercing stopped, but I felt my mouth getting filled with blood. I saw a vision of my mum come and hold my hand. She was crying. Then I felt all life just faded in my body and my eyes closed and everything went dark and silent. I woke up soaked. I didn't have any chest pain or any scars bruises of any sort on my chest. All day, I was agonized by the experience, but the effect of the dream eventually faded out. A few months after I had that dream, I had a bowel infection and was hospitalized due to severe fever and dehydration. There in the emergency room, as an intern was listening to my chest with a stethoscope, paused and asked me, do you have a coronary disease? I said, no. He said he heard a strange murmur and asked for further examination. They found out that there was a tear or hole in my heart septum three and a half centimetres in radius and they got me an open heart surgery as soon as my bowel infection was healed. During my stay in the hospital, a lot of doctors and interns came to visit me. They asked me weird questions like if I'd ever been to a doctor's office or a hospital or clinic before. On the contrary, all my childhood I was struggling with fever that came almost every two months. I was an addict in my teenage years and I overdosed twice. One of which required strict heart monitoring as I had overdosed on stimulants. I was informed that almost all babies are born with that defect, but in most cases, the body reconstructs the defected part of the septum by itself. And even if it doesn't, the radius of the defect does not exceed a few millimeters. They were so surprised how all those doctors that had examined me so far could have missed such a huge defect in the heart. They told me that because of that role on the spectrum, all the clean blood was going back to my lungs. They told me I should have experienced growth and physical activity issues, like not being able to run, etc. That I should have been no taller than 150 centimeters, weighing less than 40 kilograms, and probably must have been dead or bound to bed by now. But there I was, one meter, 76 centimeters, 55 kilograms. I was in the school swimming and basketball team until my addiction started taking over control. I was constantly going into checkups before tournaments. All that drinking, smoking and substance abuse should have also had the worst effect on me. But there I was, hospitalized, just because of eating a fruit that wasn't washed properly. So this was back in 2019. It was a few months after my mum passed away when this happened. So at the time, my sister and her partner were living with us while they were house searching. It was a Friday night when my sister's partner asked if I wanted to go for a drive to pick up some stuff down in Sydney. Given he owned an R34 GTR Skyline at the time, I said yes, as Sydney was an hour and a half drive and it just had a big ass turbo installed on it. So anyways, after leaving Sydney, we get into telling scary stories. Now he scares easily, so he was a bit spooked when we pulled into the driveway. Now for context, the parking situation was my car would be reversed in the driveway. 
My sister's car was next to the driver on the grass. My dad's was parked on the other side of the lawn between the fence and septic tank. And my sister's partner put his skyline on the lawn and his UT on the street next to it, essentially blocking the skyline from being stolen. So I had my car in the driveway at the time, which left the skyline at a weird angle. So the headlights were shining up into the garage. This was about 11 p.m. at night. After pulling in, both of us opened the doors when I caught movement from my peripherals. I looked through the windscreen to see two disembodied legs walk from the front door to the back of my car. There was no torso and no feet, just two legs strolling up to my car, then vanishing behind it. I was startled by it, but put it down to my mother just making her presence known. My mate didn't see it, but it scared him straight when I told him about it. My sister just shrugged it off and, like me, put it down to mum visiting, and that was it. A week later, my dad comes in at 7am and starts asking me about what I saw. Thought it was random, but I described it to him. He then sees the previous night he was sitting on his bed at around midnight. He had his curtains open for a breeze and was looking at his phone when he saw a full body shadow walking from my car across the lawn right in front of his window and then vanish behind his car. I feel about that one, but it's creepy as fuck. I was born and grew up in a town called Shrewsbury, in Shropshire, England. The town has a reputation of being one of the most haunted places in the world. The town is well over a thousand years old. A lot of the ruins of old buildings remain, even in the town centre. Everyone I know growing up had some sort of experience, haunted or otherwise, at some point in their lives. So, getting to my most haunted experience that spans a number of years, these aren't my only experiences. But this is the one that has affected me the most. My grandparents have a house in the Bellevue area of the town that all of my family, my mother and her siblings, grew up in. The house was a back bedroom that gives off a vibe that you just don't want to fuck with. It's the only room in the house that has the door always closed and is now used as a storeroom that my nan refuses to enter alone. It was used when I was a kid as a spare bedroom for when me and my brother would stay over but we hated being in that room. One night, me and my brother were asleep in there, and I woke up just in time to look over and see the lightning fixture of the ceiling next to my head. I can even remember the feeling of the cold plaster touching my cheek right before whatever the fuck was lifting let me go. I hit the mattress and immediately started screaming, obviously, and my dad burst into the room to find out what happened. I told him everything, but he was obviously sceptical, but I even remember him saying that the room was very cold, even though the heating was on, and there was an odd feeling he just couldn't explain. My brother, who was asleep during my incident, said he had a dream that night of an old man standing over him, shouting for him to get out, and to this day, he's reluctant to talk about it because of how real it felt. Now, this is where it starts to get worse. I was told this was over a month after the first incident, but I was at home, in my house, on the other side of the town, and it happened again. Me and my brother at this time used bunk beds, and I slept on the top bunk. My dad was downstairs watching TV, and all of a sudden, he said he got a feeling something was wrong. Then realised the feeling he felt was the same as it was when I had the incidents at my nan's. He ran upstairs and burst into the room, just in time to catch me falling from the ceiling. I had been picked up, lifted over the bed's safety rail and was hanging with my head tilted towards the ground. And my dad burst in to see me hanging there in mid-air for a split second before dropping and he caught me. He was terrified and could never explain what happened. Nothing ever happened again until I was in my mid-twenties. My nan was heading out somewhere for an overnight stay, so I said I'd stay the night, feed the dogs and sleep on the sofa. I did everything stated, went to sleep on the sofa, but woke up in the morning in the spare room. At the back of the room, behind a load of storage boxes, it took me five minutes of moving the boxes out of my way to reach the door to get out. And to this day, now 14 years later, I have no idea how the hell I got in that room, over those boxes and to the back section of the room, without damaging anything. 
I've never been more frightened after waking up in all my life, and I've never stayed another night in that house since. My nan refuses to talk about that room. My granddad was the same prior to his death. I've no idea what happened in that house, what spirit or worse is living in that back room, but I'll never go back in that room for as long as I live. Number one, steps. Sometimes when I'm home alone, since the pandemic I've been working from home, I can hear footsteps outside my room in the hallway, like someone is walking out there. It doesn't really matter what time it is. It can happen during the morning, evening, or in the middle of the night. The steps always sounds like it goes up or down the stairs. I usually don't hear more than two to six steps at a time. They sound heavy. Just like when I, a friend, or a family member walk there. There's no wind, rain, or cats doing anything most of the time when I hear this. This happens about one to three times a month since autumn last year. Number two, voices. I hear voices where there shouldn't be any. I have my bedroom on the second floor of my house, and I can hear voices talking outside of my balcony door, day or night. And when I look out there, there's nothing there, and the voices stop. I do have neighbours, of course, and I hear them often, but the voices are very close to me. Kind of like people are outside, standing on my balcony and talking. There have even been voices in the other end of the house, outside my bedroom in the hallway with the steps. Again, I assumed it would be my neighbours, but they weren't around, and the voices sound too clear and close for it to be them. Usually their voices and the sound they make are very muffled, because they're far away. Like I mentioned above, this doesn't happen often. It's only happened three times thus far. Number three, cat growling. My cat's afraid of the hallway I've been mentioning before. He's been living here for over two years and he's always liked to sleep out there on the sofa. Since 2022 started, he hasn't been very keen on being out there anymore during certain times. He comes dashing into my room, hides under my desk where I do my gaming and work looks out to the hallway and just growls. If I pick him up, he keeps his eyes out to the hallway and still growls, and he doesn't want to be there. I go out to the hallway with him and close the door to my room. I put him down and I sat myself down on the floor. He goes into this defensive position and just growls. One time, his eyes and head were looking at something that seemed to move, following it with his head and moving his body accordingly while growling to feel safe. Similar stuff with the growling and hiding in my room has happened with other cats too before, but it was only when my neighbour's dog or something was making noise. Now, there's no noise coming from outside. All of this happens only after around 7pm and can last for around 30 minutes up to 3 hours. If I close the door, he tries to dig in. There are other rooms like a toilet, another bedroom and the rooms downstairs he can hide in, but he for some reason wants to hide in here. I don't feel anything myself when this happens. No matter if I'm in my room, in the hallway, with or without the cat. It happens and still does weekly, and sometimes several days in a row. Considering it happens so randomly, I don't think there's anything wrong with the cat, personally. Number four, a sighing sound and me running into something. I was alone in my room, the only one awake, and the house was fully quiet because animals and a family member were sleeping. I walk into the hallway so I can get to the toilet to brush my teeth. When I walk through my doorway, it feels like I hit something. Not like I walked into a wall or a person's shoulder, but like I walked through something. This time around, I also got a feeling of discomfort, which hasn't really happened up until now, even with the voices on the balcony and the steps I heard. I brush my teeth and go back to bed. Going through the doorway to my bedroom, I don't walk into something again. I lay down in my very big bed on the right side from my perspective, and I also lay on my right side. There I lay, just thinking about life for a minute or two, when I suddenly hear someone, or something, sighing. Just once. The sound you can make when you take your clothes off and just jump onto the bed, being happy that you can finally rest after a hard day's work. I don't hear or feel someone laying down on my bed, 
just that sighing or moaning sound. This made me feel very uncomfortable, so I took the cat and went downstairs to sleep in an extra bed on the floor. Number five, a voice saying no. Me and a friend of over 10 years are going to meet up. It's a thing I'm very excited about because we've only been talking to each other online for all this time. I wanted to talk to my friend about it further to plan the trip a little bit. Before we did, I sat on my bed a Tuesday night just talking out loud. She works Wednesday, Thursday and Friday. Maybe we could talk on Sunday. No. That's what I heard. No. I'm the only one home and I clearly heard a woman-ish voice or sound say no. I freak out, type to my friend and we do a voice call. The feeling of discomfort was obviously there, but went away very quickly when I got to talk to my friend. It wasn't so bad that I had to leave the room then and there. Could be because her voice and presence calmed me down. We decided to still meet up on Discord to talk about the trip that Sunday and nothing happened. Number six, glass falling to the floor. I was laying in my bed, not being able to sleep. It's just me in the room and a glass on my bedside table falls on its own and rolls down onto the floor. My cat's in the hallway and this time around, he actually growls and looks at my room, not wanting to come in, which is totally opposite to how it's been there. I wasn't even stretching or anything like that. I was just laying in my bed thinking about stuff and it just fell. While scary, I still spent the rest of the night in my bedroom. Number seven, another moaning sound. This is the last one I have for now. Two days ago, on the 13th of March around 3am, I heard a sound from the other side of my room which sounded like, it's hard to describe. It got louder and louder and just faded away. I was just laying awake in my bed and looking at random stuff on my phone when it happened. I froze, which hasn't happened before. I guess most people would if they heard a random sound, but this is the only time I felt really bad when something happened. Like once before, I took my stuff and moved to the bed downstairs. To those who don't know what a jinn is, a jinn is basically a demon that most Muslims believe in. When I was born, my mom would always see a black cat at the end of the hallway, leading to my room at 3 a.m. And when the cat entered, I would scream out crying. But as soon as my mom would come into the room, she would see that the cat was nowhere to be found. Or sometimes, my mom would find me naked while I was asleep at the age of five. This happened till I was seven or eight years old, I think. Here's one of the stories that I still remember to this day that freaks me out. When I was five years old, I went to my aunt's house in Saudi Arabia. It was a new house at the time, so she had a housewarming party for just the women. As I was sitting with my mom and my aunt, I turned to my aunt and told her that in some areas of this house, she should not sit there at midnight because there was a robber. That's what I called the gin at the time. So she was confused and asked me what areas these places are. I told her the room was painted red, beside the washer, under the stairs, etc. When I finished, Talking, my aunt just stunned and horrified, since these are the places she felt like something was wrong and she needs to leave as soon as possible. When my aunt finished talking, we saw that all the lights in the neighborhood had gone out, so we all rushed to the streets and away from the darkness. As soon as we're all out, I was holding my mother's hand and tugged at it to get a hold of her attention. When I finally did, I told her that I feel something bad is going to happen to my uncle. Nobody knows this, but my uncle was on the second floor watching some TV to give the women their space and time. Anyway, as soon as I said those words, my uncle came running and screaming. As he calmed down, he told us that before the light shut off, he saw an elderly woman with long jet black hair looking at him. Just as he finished talking, we heard a crash and a little girl screaming. When we turned around, we found that there was a small Toyota truck that had hit my sister. But then the truck was nowhere to be seen. My mum was pregnant at the time and after what has happened with my sister, she had a miscarriage. So there's something, I think a spirit, 
that interacted with me for years in the house where I grew up. I've also seen it once, so I'll recount that first. When I was 12 or 13, I got up early on a weekend and was doing the chores I had neglected to do the evening before. At one point I turned around and there was a woman standing there in front of me, looking at me, clearly and distinctly. I was startled and gasped, but she disappeared after about a quarter second. She was about my height at the time, maybe a little taller, so around 5'3 maybe. Brown hair, brown green eyes. She was nude, but had a white towel wrapped around her like she'd just stepped out of the shower, and her hair was also wet. I do want to mention that there was plenty of light in the room, and there were no shadows for my mind to turn into a person. Like I said, I was startled, but not freaked out. After a few minutes, I went back to my chores. Not long after, my mom got out of bed, and I told her about what I saw. She laughed at first, but got a shocked look on her face when I described the woman. She said that she'd seen this person in a dream, just before waking up. We were both weirded out but nothing really came of it. Later, I connected this with previous incidents, like hearing strange sounds in the bathroom at night and feeling a presence in my room. For the sounds in the bathroom, my bedroom is immediately adjacent to it. You can't really enter it without me hearing you walk in. I knew it wasn't a family member and we didn't have pets in the house. I'd hear water running, cabinet and closet doors open and close, shower curtains shifting, that kind of thing. This went on for years, from when we moved in, when I was seven, to when I was 14 or so. As for the presence in my room, it was something I'd sometimes feel when I was younger, like nine or ten. I felt like something was standing a couple of feet from my bedside. There was nothing to see, of course, and I slept with a lamp on, but I still felt that I knew exactly where it was. I used to think it was an angel, since I felt no fear or bad intentions from it, only calm and gentle vibes. That's actually true of all of this. I never felt any malevolence from anything inside the house. All of this stopped by the time I was 14. Not long, a couple years after I saw her. Anyway, not sure what I'm looking for by posting this, but I just wanted to share. I'd like to talk about it with some people, and I'd like to hear any speculation anyone has about her as well. preface this, my friend's dad passed away when she was a teenager, and she very much believes in spirits. Before he passed away, her dad made a mirror, which until recently, my friend's aunt had. My friend and her aunt don't get along, and out of the blue, the aunt offered her the mirror. My friend accepted, but ever since, strange things were happening in her home. Her aunt claims to be a witch, and my friend thinks that she had done something to the mirror before giving it to her. So last weekend, whilst I was at my friend's house, she asked me if I would mind if she cleaned the mirror with me there. My friend used a smudge stick and did a cleansing and afterwards asked if I would do a spirituality test with her. She handed me a piece of paper and a pen and asked me to write the first thing that came to my head when she asked questions. She also had a piece of paper and a pen and was doing the same. She spoke out loud and asked her dad things like, tell us a number between 1 to 10. Tell us a month. Now, I'm neither a believer or non-believer, but in my head, all I could think at this point is statistically, we have around a 1 in 10 chance of saying the same number. I really, really wanted my friend to feel good about what we were doing, but I really doubted the legitimacy of it. My friend told me to ask a question, and for a second I hesitated. I was unsure if she meant for me to ask her dad a question, or to ask somebody I knew. The following thoughts went through my head. If I had to ask somebody, who would I ask and what would I ask? In my head, I thought I'd ask my grandmother and that I'd ask her to name a flower. I asked my friend who I should ask and she said anybody and I decided that this was about her trying to contact her dad. So I asked her dad to tell us a day of the week. As I was saying this, my friend said to me that a random word had popped into her head that wasn't a day of the week but she felt like she needed to write it down. At the end of the questions, she gave me her piece of paper and written on it instead of a day of the week was the word flower. 
I had not said anything out loud about who or what I would have asked. There's no possible way my friend would have known that I had thought that. I instantly get goosebumps, and this keeps playing on my mind over a week later. I've always been a logic-based person, but I just can't explain what happened. Back during the very beginning of the pandemic, around March of 2020, my entire household caught COVID. My sister had very mild symptoms. Loss of smell and taste was literally the worst thing she had. I was hit a little harder and was laid out for about a week. My dad, an elderly diabetic man, however, was hit pretty badly. We tried to keep an eye on him as best we could, constantly asking if he wanted to go to the emergency room. His cough was so bad at times he couldn't breathe, but he always refused, saying he didn't think it was that bad yet. I found out later that he would often wake up early during those days unable to breathe, and that was when he felt maybe it was time to seek help. But when he would find us still asleep, he didn't want to burden us and would just go back to his room. We were still recovering from our own bouts with COVID, but were well enough to watch over him, but he felt we were exhausting ourselves doing that instead of resting. The incident in question happened around the middle of the third week. I was starting to feel well enough that I could sit up and play games for a while without getting nauseatingly dizzy or my body or lungs aching. My dad had started off with symptoms similar to mine, but by this point, his cough had worsened to where he had trouble breathing and he had lost a lot of weight. Every day, we asked how he was doing and he claimed to be fine, in between fits of intense coughing. His constant refusal to go to the hospital kind of had my sister and I resigning to the possibility that one day we'd wake up to discover our father had passed away in his sleep. So I was in my room playing one evening when all of a sudden my power went out. My TV and console turned off, but not my lights. Assuming my sister had unplugged my power, my room was makeshift and there were no outlets, so I ran a power cord from her room to mine. I asked her if she had unplugged my power. She claimed not to have. When I left my room to inspect the cable, I heard my TV on. Confused, I entered and sat down to resume playing, and just after the game finished loading, it turned off again. I got up to make sure the cables were properly connected, but found them fine. So I disconnected and reconnected them, and returned to my room. For some reason, as I was walking to my room, I got the sudden urge to check on my dad. He had gone to his room early to lay down after eating a bit. Unfortunately, I was in gamer mood and just wanted to get back to playing, so I ignored the feeling. The TV turned on and as soon as I sat down, it turned off. At this point I was getting aggravated and as I left the place to replace the cables, my TV, once again, turned on. As soon as I stepped foot outside my room, I turned to enter and it turned off. I left and it turned on. I called my sister over and she was as confused as I was. I probably left and entered at least 10 times with the power coming and going. From the start to this point couldn't have been more than seven minutes. The entire time, my feeling to check on my dad kept getting stronger until I decided maybe something was trying to tell me to go check on him. I approached his room and since everything was off, including his TV, I assumed he was sleeping. Only, my father snores very loudly when he sleeps and I didn't hear him. I entered and he was laying on his bed. I called out to him but got no response. Unusual, because my father has always been a light sleeper. I called him again and still no response. My stomach was getting ready to drop when I called him a third time. And I heard him take a deep breath in and he turned to look at me. He asked me what I needed and I said nothing, just checking if he was okay. He said yes, and I went back to my room. I entered and turned the TV and my console on. They stayed on for a few minutes when all of a sudden, tears started rolling down my cheeks. I don't know why, but all of a sudden I was overwhelmed with a sense of, I don't know, relief. But the emotion didn't seem like it was solely my own. I was glad I listened to my instinct to check on my dad because I got the feeling that we could have lost him that night, but I couldn't understand why it overwhelmed me so much. 
I never told my father about this, but I did speak to my older sister who lives away from us with her husband and their seven kids. And she said that our dad told her that when he was at his worst from the virus, he had a dream that his father came to see him. My grandfather died before I was born, but all of my father's family has always said I remind them of him. Anyways, my dad said they spoke for a bit, and when he woke up, I was calling him. My sister says our dad believes his father came to take him. She didn't put much stock in his story then, but after telling her my story might have affected her or something, because since then, she's made much more of an effort to invite our father over to her house to spend time with his grandkids. I suppose the reason I've never told my dad is for fear that he might read too much into it. He's a very devout Catholic and treat me differently. I already get a lot of grief from my sisters who feel my parents favor me as the youngest and only boy. And I don't want him to start acting like my mom thinks I'm like blessed or something because of something that apparently happened when I was much younger. My mother's family claims to be sensitive to this kind of stuff. And sometimes it's hard to argue with them, but I've never really believed in the supernatural. It's been almost two years, however, and I still think back to this night. One night, many years ago, I think it was between the years of 2009 to 11, I was between 20 to 22 years old. I was on my old computer at night, and I was curious to see things about mysteries on the internet. I found a page with themes of magic and magical animals. So there was a phrase for being friends with an elf. I read it out loud. It was in an unknown language. And nothing happened at that moment, and I didn't give it importance at that moment. It was 10 p.m. At about midnight, I went to sleep. I usually wake up a lot at dawn because I have insomnia. I wake up every hour and a few seconds later, I go back to sleep. So it was about 1.30 a.m. I was sleeping and I opened my eyes and I saw how something was pulling up the duvet with which I was covering myself so as not to be cold that night. That something was about 20 centimeters and it was on top of my mattress. I couldn't see it well since it, all this happened in half a second. It was all dark, but there was definitely something very close to my face, covering me with the duvet up to my neck. Instinctively, I covered myself with the duvet and I started hitting the inside of it to try to get rid of that thing that had scared me. I, in there, super scared, took courage and quickly lowered the duvet to my hips and turned on a small television that I had near my feet in order to light the room. When the TV was on, I looked around the room and saw nothing. I was still in a state of panic and said out loud, I don't want to see anyone else, any elves or goblins. Since that night, nothing has appeared in my room. Two years later, I heard that my brother, who slept in a nearby room, told me that he saw out of the corner of his eye an elf, small and dark, running around from his closed door to the also closed window. He said that this happened in a split second. All this happened around 2 or 3 a.m., so I asked him when it happened. I did the math, and I think it was the same day and night that I kicked that poor elf out of my room to never see him again. From the looks of it, elves can walk through doors and windows. My aunt lives in a two-story Tudor-style house that used to be a restaurant. The upstairs was always a living quarters. It was built in the 80s and in the Appalachian Mountains. Here's a chronicle of what's happened so far in as best of an order I can provide. When I was a kid, I used to see a witch sitting in a rocking chair. She was a haggard old woman in black with a shawl covering her head. Think Baby Yaga, not Broomhilda. The attic accesses, you know the can with the fold downstairs, started flying open and rattling after 10 years of being quiet. Marbles from inside cabinets would appear and roll across the floor when only my aunt and uncle were home. Opaque black humanoid shadows would crawl across the floor and walls. When I was 13, I was piddling around waiting for the adults to be ready to go. I saw the broken clock on the wall that had been hanging in my aunt's homes forever and decided to mess with it and turn the time to noon. We all left the house. The clock that had been broken for years returned to its original time. I was the last to leave the house and the first to return upstairs when we were done going out. 
I was laying upstairs in the living room when I heard someone walk to the doorway of the adjacent bedroom. I opened my eyes to see my cousin's mom peeking out from around the doorframe at me, smiled and went back in the room. A few minutes later, I heard walking upstairs. They creaked so loud it's impossible to avoid hearing someone use them. She walked to the living room to drink coffee. I didn't hear her walk downstairs or see her leave the bedroom. I was facing the hallway she would need to use the exit, go down, get coffee and come back up. I still don't know who or what was looking at me. I was sitting in the old restaurant on a computer around midnight when from a bottom shelf, three industrial sized mixing bowls flew across the room at me. I watched closely to see who did it. No one ran by, but I heard the stairs creak as if someone was going up. There was no way to get from the bowls to the stairs without being seen for a moment. I ran up to the top of the stairs to go into the apartment with the adults to find the door was dead bolted shut and all the kids were locked downstairs. We were teenagers. The apartment was complete access to walk inside the outer walls via two to four foot doors scattered about the rooms. We were playing hide and seek once and hid in the walls. My aunt jerked me out by my arm yelling not to. After I apologized, I asked why and she refused to say, which is unlike her. She never leaves a kid without an explanation. There's an abandoned service station across the street from the house. We went exploring because in all our years at the property, we had never seen anyone tend to it when an old car comes flying down the mountain. We run and a man gets put wearing nothing but underwear. He waves at us unblinking and smiles creepily. Never saw him again. 